Hi and welcome to this video which should tell you how to do the valve adjustment on your Renault D4F engine as seen here. So for this you just need 10mm spanner, some feeder gauges and a flat bladed screwdriver. And the adjustment is quite important especially for this engine which is extremely noisy at the top ends because the camshaft is worn out. So adjusting it's probably not going to be, give me much benefit but I thought we'd still do the procedure anyway because it's sort of quite a weird procedure because you've got to have the exhaust valve fully open and then you adjust an inlet and an exhaust on adjacent cylinders and stuff. So I thought the procedures might be worth just laying it down to help other people if they need to adjust their um, valve clearances. So that's what this video is about and if it does help you I would appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe to the channel that would be much appreciated and as always have a good weekend. So in this video I'll be using the exhaust valve method of doing the valve adjustment. So for that I'll use an 18mm socket on the crank pulley and this is a cold engine and then we need to rotate the engine so that the exhaust on cylinder one is fully open. So I'm just watching the followers go down. It should be coming around now. There we go, it's going down. And then just make sure that's as fully down as possible before it starts to come back up. Okay, so that's now the engine set so that we can adjust inlet valves three and exhaust valves four. Okay, so... So here's a quick picture. So this is cylinder one is fully open, the exhaust, and we're going to adjust cylinder three and cylinder four. So what you do need to note though is there is a groove on the camshaft on some models. Now this model's got the groove, which I'm trying to show here, very bit overblown there on the left with the light. But I did take a photo as well. Now here's the actual cam. So you can see it's on cylinder number two, that groove. Okay, so let's adjust the inlet valves on cylinder three. So this is my choice of feeler gauges that I've got. And we'll just get in there now and just see what the gap is at the moment. As you can see, extremely loose, but this might be partly due to my camshaft being ruined. But as you can see, so forgetting the camshaft, it's obviously got loads of clearance, so it needs adjusting. So all we've got to do is undo that with a 10 millimeter spanner. Pop your feeler gauge underneath. And we're looking for just a slight amount of drag. So just pinch, if you keep rotating, you'll actually push the valve open. So you're looking for a drag and certainly not pushing the valve open. And then once that's right, just pinch that back up with the 10 mil spanner. And then double check it. Pop your feeder gauge under there. There we are. So, so it's got a nice little bit of drag there. Probably a little bit too tight. So you've just got to get it to where you feel. There we go, that seems to be right. And then we've got to do the same again on the second inlet valve. Because obviously there's two valves um, per uh, inlet cylinder on the cylinder. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. So here we go, we just do the same again on the second valve. Pinch that up. So that's too too sloppy. There we go, just a bit of drag there. It's quite a time consuming job this, when you've got 16 of those to do. That probably is a little bit loose. Um, but anyway, so now on to adjusting the exhaust valves on cylinder four. So obviously it's a slightly thicker feeler gauge now. 
that's the three I've got available in my set that would be suitable. Now it's a bit more awkward because obviously it's at the back of the engine. I'll get that pipe out of the way. Just undo those. Not sure why this spanner wasn't sitting down on that. You certainly hear the wind outside. Okay, so that one's correct. So I'll speed most of this up because obviously you don't need to see the whole procedure um, for every single one. There we are, so that's... Now we're on to adjusting the inlet valves on cylinder 4 and the exhaust valves on cylinder 2. So here's another quick photo. So we want cylinder 3, the exhaust, fully open so that we can do cylinders 4 and cylinder 2. Like I say, you definitely want to take your time with this. Uh, otherwise you can start forgetting which cylinders you've been adjusting. So we're going for exhaust 3. It's not moving yet. There we go. So just keep a careful eye on it before it starts to come back up again. I mean, you shouldn't turn the engine anti-clockwise, but you may need to just to sort of bring it back up a tiny bit if you notice it's going um, coming back up. Okay, so then we adjust these. So this is now cylinder four inlet. So like I said, I've sped this up a bit because you don't want to keep it. And then we're adjusting now exhaust on cylinder two. This is always a bit confusing on the French cars as well because their cylinder numbering is opposite to what you would normally expect. Okay, so now adjusting inlet valves on cylinder two and exhaust valves on cylinder one. So we need cylinder four exhaust fully open so that we can do the inlet on cylinder two and the exhaust on cylinder one. It gets really quite confusing. So rotate the engine again. So now we're on cylinder four on the Renault. This is very confusing because that's by the timing belt, which would normally be cylinder one, but it's not. It's cylinder four because cylinder one is at the clutch side. Okay, so now we're doing the inlet on cylinder two. Adjust those. It's probably worth noting as you do this because it, I actually got confused halfway through and I had to redo it because I wasn't sure which cylinders I had adjusted. So it's probably worth making a note as you actually do this so that you definitely know and don't make a mistake. And then we're on the exhaust of cylinder one. Okay, and then we've just got the final one now. On cylinder one to do. Pinch that. Okay, so now it's adjusting the inlet valves on cylinder one and the exhaust valves on cylinder three. So we need exhaust two fully open so that we can do cylinder three exhaust and cylinder one inlet. So let's rotate that engine again. So this is exhaust number two, fully open. There we go. And then it's inlet on cylinder one, next to the flywheel. This cylinder numbering really gets me every time because I'm so programmed that cylinder one is next to the timing belt and it's not on these engines. I don't think it is on any of the French engines. Let's just check that, it's got a bit of drag on there. You see, you could probably work on these for a while just to make sure it's absolutely perfect. 
I am sort of speeding through this just for the video. And also, I know the engine on this car is no good. And then finally, we've got the exhaust on cylinder three. To adjust that. There we are. And then the I'm just trying to see if it, there's any movement onto the feeler gauge. And then the final one there of our second valve on the exhaust. Pinch that. So hopefully that's the job done and the engine should be a little bit quieter and performance should be improved. Okay, so here's some talk and other information just for your reference. And as always, here's some reference photographs which you can pause to view for longer. So you've been watching how to adjust the valve clearances on this 2014 Dacia Sandero with the D4F engine. And thank you for watching and supporting my channel. Please like and subscribe. And this video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in October 2023. And I can also be found on Instagram and Facebook and X, if you want to be the fourth subscriber on X. Um, yes. <laughs>